Well, this is a real Rebel Health Media. Um, I want to bring out something I actually didn't realize before. In order to bring up your vitamin D levels, to actually bring them up, you don't just take vitamin D, and of course you want to take vitamin D with vitamin K2, because vitamin K2 will regulate how the vitamin D works. In other words, if it's working, you want the vitamin D to go strengthen your bones, strengthen your teeth, you want the vitamin D to repair your cells, and vitamin D has actually been known to help prevent cancer too. You don't want vitamin D just to help um, synthesize calcium in a haphazard way whereby it could get calcium in your veins and arteries and heart and calcify the heart and veins and arteries. So you want to take vitamin K2 with vitamin D. But there's another caveat. There's another caveat. And actually the ratio you would take K2 to vitamin D is um, 100 micrograms per 1,000 units of vitamin D. Now, if you do not have enough magnesium on hand, you will not get your vitamin D levels raised up in your blood. No matter how much vitamin D and K2 you take, if you do not have adequate magnesium levels, you will not be able to raise the vitamin D. Now, one of the problems that we have where we are the vast majority of people in the United States are magnesium deficient is because of the soils, the soils themselves. In other words, even if you eat organic food and foods that are grown without pesticides and herbicides and grown organically and non-GMO foods, this, the plants themselves have to uptake the trace minerals in them. They're not required for the plants to grow, but we need these trace minerals and when we consume the plant, plants or vegetables, we need to have them in our bodies because they're essential. In other words, now what you could do is you could take a trace mineral tablet concentration which is a combination of a lot of different things. In other words, it would have the magnesium in there and that might be a better way of doing it because um, this has you know iron, magnesium, selenium, potassium. Potassium is very good. Kelp kelp which is actually excellent for your iodine levels, alfalfa which is known pretty much you know in ancient times that was known as pretty much a cure-all and boron which is very helpful for a number of body processes including hormonal imbalances but you could also take the magnesium by itself you know I would suggest probably getting it that way because there's no such thing as a magic supplement that does everything it's, it's a matter of what you take, it seems to work with something else. Um, it's not, it seems to work with something else. It's pretty much everything works together synergistically. Um, magnesium can also be, a lack of magnesium can occur from not just, um, you know, depleted soils, which most people in the United States are magnesium deficient, but it could also be from taking higher amounts of vitamin D because as you take the vitamin D with the K2 as the body tries to synthesize and process the vitamin D it uses up the magnesium so everything works together but most and I did not realize this even though I have read I think it's called a magnesium miracle or magnesium cure or some book like that I forgot it was by a doctor and I must have skipped over the part about how it works with vitamin D. I do know magnesium does have many functions. It actually can help provide, help you with your energy levels somewhat. That's a little bit controversial, but it also um, helps with the um, regular rhythm of the heart. Sometimes people have heart palpitations, and you know magnesium might help with that. It also helps with anxiety. Uh, you'll probably never hear a psychiatrist tell you that because they'll probably just describe you some kind of high profit medicines. Mag a lack of magnesium can cause anxiety. Also, I think it's uh, one of the studies, if I recall correctly, there was a study they restricted magnesium on rats and the, the diet of restricted magnesium on rats caused the rats to be have more aggressive behavior. So magnesium actually is, is related to um, a lack of magnesium actually is related to mental disorders, believe it or not, you know. Although you won't hear that too much in the medical field because 
anything nutritionally that corrects something will actually cause them to lose money. <laughs> you know, it's that's really what it is. So, um, another side note too: um, iron, sometimes magnesium. You know, it's a little controversial if magnesium could actually actually magnesium is actually necessary for the body processes whereby you know the energy is coming in and out of the the cells, but it could some it's a little controversial if it really does help with mon, uh, anemia but it could help with your energy levels now just as a side note sometimes a lot of times people are also deficient in iron so but just to keep it simple sometimes it's better to get something like this you know trace minerals where it has a lot of a combination of everything because if you're short on just one trace mineral and it's an obvious fact the way things are farmed today that I think they only need three things to actually grow the products the food products and they do not add trace minerals in the soils actually this has been known as a problem since the 1930s that the soils in the farmlands have been becoming severely depleted of trace minerals so when people are taking vitamin D, which is one of your more important vitamins, actually more aptly, correctly named a hormone, that can correct a number of problems in the body. And it's best to, well, it's a little controversial as to what your vitamin D levels optimally should be, but for most people, they're way, way lower than they optimally should be. And even if you're laying out in the sun or for 15, 20 minutes a day or something, doing it the natural way, not taking any kind of vitamin D3 pills or anything, you're still not going to get your vitamin D levels up in your body if you are magnesium deficient. Now this magnesium citrate is one of the better types of magnesium for absorption and I recommend that type over other types and sometimes they have a combination where there's three types of magnesium but you know, from my readings, I've found that uh, magnesium citrate is one of the best absorbable types of magnesium, and that's one of the key things. You want to make sure that the magnesium is absorbable. But I do like this, but these you have to take to get the recommended daily amount on here. You actually have to take three of these, so um, just three big pills a day. So you can't get away from just taking one pill. But it does have the boron, it does have the iron, it does have the kelp, it does have the alfalfa, um, and it does have potassium. That's another thing where a lot of times, well, very small amount of potassium, but I forgot to mention that. Potassium is something whereby a lot of times people are often in their sodium-potassium balance. And, um, you know... That's so just another issue, so. But nothing is like, oh, just take vitamin D. You know? Actually, it's dangerous to take high amounts of vitamin D if you don't combine them with K2. But then, yeah, you need magnesium with it. So, everything is a balance. But vitamin D is one of your most important vitamins going. Vitamin C and vitamin D are the two most important vitamins. But you can't ignore any of them. And it's not just the vitamins that provide all the benefits. They work together with various types of minerals or proteins. Um, a lot of times iodine. Even when you take iodine, this has kelp in it, which has iodine, which is another miracle. Which is just one of the reasons I like this combination thing. You want to take the selenium with it. And this doesn't have selenium in it, but, uh, you know... It's like not every. Oh, wait a minute. It does right here. It does right there. Selenium. Okay, so this has zinc, vanadium, copper, iron, phosphorus, iodine, silicon, calcium. There's, there's um, 72 ionic naturally occurring trace minerals in there. I thought that's what that was in here. So, you know, that might be the better way to take the magnesium, in my opinion. 
in my opinion. You know, I always thought this was the best way, but I, I, I lean towards that now. So I'm using those up, and I'm taking those instead. Because as I, like, I found out, you know, okay, vitamin D is great. Then I found out you got to take it with K2, and then I found out it depletes magnesium. So it's like an endless circle. Let's try to get something that has a combination of as many things in balance as possible that's absorbable. So when you take, you're taking less pills, and it's, you know, working all together synergistically. So, all right, this is uh, this is the real Rebel Health Media over here, and of course, <laughs> you know, don't let the imposter freaking tell you something else. <laughs> well, like, yeah, like this is the flag I actually had flying up through Hurricane Irma. It still survived, believe it or not. Got a little frayed here on the edge, but I sewed it back together and replaced the other one. But, you know, it's a symbol of rebelling against the establishment in some ways, in corporatocracy and crony capitalism, whereby the FDA and Big Pharma are in bed with each other. So, even though that's not the meaning it had back, well, in some ways it did. It's kind of a break away from the, the District of Columbia and the main swamp, you know. So... Today we're trying to make a break away from, I don't know, what you call those, the, the federal domicile of, you know, the FDA, whatever the hell you call those guys, whatever could be a great name for them. Because um, Big Pharma, you know, they're out to sell you medicines and procedures and surgeries, and most things can be fixed with plain nutrition, unless you got an emergency. But most of the time, as long as you got the time, where it's not life-threatening, you can correct most of your problems, physical problems, with nutrition. And, um, but, you know, unfortunately, the educational efforts of the medical field are not in that direction. And it's like amateurs like me who have to freaking study on their own, which I've been doing this, actually, even though I'm not a medical professional, I have been studying uh, this type of information for probably 20 years and most of the stuff I get my where I get my information from is from medical doctors or are the renegade types so hence rebel renegade <laughs> we're going against the mainstream corporatocracy in the medical field and telling people yeah okay you can reduce your colon cancer and breast cancer by over 90 percent with adequate with amounts of vitamin D you know some doctors will tell you that most of them won't. And so how do you get your vitamin D levels up? Okay, you got to take it with K2. But you also, if you have, if you are depleted with magnesium, your vitamin D levels will never go up to the optimal levels. So you have to have the magnesium. And then, you know, just to freaking knock out the confusion, sometimes you're better off taking the magnesium in a form like this, where it has the 72 trace elements. It's got... The selenium, the kelp with the iodine, the alfalfa, the boron, and the iron. And, and they're all from natural occurring forms that are very absorbable. So, you know, might be the better way to do things. Otherwise, if you took 72 trace elements each in a pill, you'd have 72 bottles, right? <laughs> I don't want to be bothering with that. I'd rather take it like that. The magnesium is actually in there. And it's not a real, real lot of it. It's um, 69 per 70%, 275 milligrams. But it's still, you know, it's all in the mixture of everything else that works together. So, And you still will get some magnesium from foods. But typically, you know, if you were growing foods back in the 1800s, you probably never had a problem with magnesium shortages. Today, everything is just over farmed, and you know, none of these trace elements are pretty much in the foods. No matter, even if you go to like the whole food stores and you get, you know, the best organically grown stuff, that doesn't mean they're grown in soils with high adequate amounts of trace minerals. That just means they're non GMO, that just means they're grown without pesticides and herbicides, and um, the soils are still continually. Replant it, replant it, because a plant doesn't need magnesium to grow. We need the magnesium. The plant, you want the plant to take up the magnesium 
and all the trace elements in the plant so when you consume the plant or the vegetable it gets in your body so they're, they're not going to grow the foods like that unless it's uh, a farm that's on the bottom of a glacier runoff or something like that you know and you have to be extremely lucky to get some foods from that but typically no matter where you buy the foods even if it's a health food store they're not going to have adequate amounts of trace minerals so magnesium is being one of the trace minerals and you got to have enough ag magnesium to get your vitamin D levels up no matter how much vitamin D and K2 you take okay so here's the real rebel media <laughs> rebel health or whatever you want to call it over and out